just to see if uh, you can hear us. And Jane, can we hear you? I can hear you. Okay, you're a little faint. Um, you might have to talk up just a little, or it could be my headphone. But um, if you are, how's that? Is that better? <laughs> yes, much better. Everybody okay. can hear us now. Okay. Um, welcome. My name is Alice Wolf. I'm the manager of education and publications at Madeira USA. Um, from safety to special effects, visibility is something that can be the result of embroidery, whether it's for um, uniforms or special effects. There's the uh, government mandated version and there's the creative version. Embroidery can be simple, it can be stock designs or, or more complex applique work. It can be the result of masterful digitizing or simply swapping out a specialty thread for a general purpose thread. It can be federally mandated or just a creative special effect. We're very pleased today to have Jane Swansea with us. Jane is an embroiderer decorator known for her innovation, unique ideas, and clever placement of of uh, designs. Welcome, Jane. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> uh, together with our Madeira's own Nancy Minnie, Jane and Nancy will be walking us through what to use, how to use, and when to use embroidery items that will enhance visibility. Any questions that you have, please type them in. We will answer all of them, as many in real time as possible, but any that we don't um, answer within this hour. We'll be collecting and sending them out to everyone by email. Also, the webinar is being recorded and we'll, you will have access to that as well. Today we're going to take a look at both extremes, as I mentioned before. Creating maximum visibility for situations that are dangerous and require as much visibility as possible. And at the opposite end of the spectrum, special effects that will brighten or shine and otherwise call attention to an embroidered product or garment. These are the items, um, both the categories of safety and special effects, and some of the products that we know of that can accomplish them. Uh, we're going to be talking about government compliant applique material. Uh, the only one that we offer at this point is made by 3M. Uh, we're talking about light activated special effects. We're talking about thread that temporarily glows in the dark. Talking about embroidery thread that sparkles and shines from reflecting light. And also the fluorescent polyester threads that we offer will glow under black light. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So let's start off. Jane, if you could get us going, please. Okay, we'll start with the fabric that should be your go-to product when safety is specified by customers such as local police and fire departments, aeronautics, petroleum, automotive. This is a 3M product called Scotchlight Reflective Applique Fabric. Um, most of you are real familiar with it with construction, especially if you live in Houston, you're used to it. And you can buy product that already has the reflective tape on it, or you buy the fabric and you put the reflective tape on whatever garment that you need it on or want it on. Um, it's very versatile. You can, uh, and it's very easy to work with also. So like Jane said, this um, fabric, or I should say the, the garments that you're seeing this, the apparels that are out there, they're just getting more and more popular. Um, you're seeing it pretty much everywhere. I think the oddest spot that I saw it recently was in a, a magazine for Handyman, and it showed this guy um, rolling out some sod on a lawn. And I'm like, why would this guy need to be wearing, um, he had on like the yellow vest with this material on it, so it was reflective. He turned the page, of course, and... Um, there he is on the edge of the road rolling out that sod as well. So um, I'm just seeing it. My husband works for a municipality. Um, everything he wears has to have that on there. So it's just really getting bigger and bigger. So with that, with the apparel companies out there staying up to beat on that, um, this applique material is actually going to become more and more popular. Um, and here Jane and I have actually just done a couple examples with applique um, for this material, because that is what it is. So, I mean, you really can use it for any applique, and you can increase it. It doesn't have to be for safety standards, um, but it's going to help you um, increase that visibility. 
uh, with the lights at night reflecting on it. So I simply just took a design that has um, that was shaped like a bone, um, put a simple dog's name on it as well, and this I would put this on my dog um, if I was walking him out at night, or if he was you know potentially could get away um, the jackets or the scarves or whatever. This could just be applied on it, and it's going to give your pet or your animal. Um, some um, increased visibility at night when the lights reflect on it. So it's going to keep them safer. And um, Jane did a really cute um, sweatshirt with the day glow green and put the, um, the squirrel on it. Jane, um, go ahead and tell us about that. Yeah, we have a neighborhood running club called Oak Forest Running Club. And of course, being in Oak Forest, we have squirrels everywhere. And their symbol is a squirrel, not this squirrel, but a squirrel. And it made me think about you know, just take some of this 3M tape and applique a squirrel design on the back of a shirt. And that way it, it's cute, it ties in with but it also makes them more visible. Um, and, and, and it's just kind of fun. And this is good for running clubs. It's something like this for your neighborhood watch. For dog walkers, we have a lot of dog walkers in our area, and they're the, you know they come by and they're there at night, and it's really nice to see. Just applique the words "dog walker" on the back of their shirt so they're more visible while they're taking your precious baby out for a stroll. And then what I do also is just take the little bits and pieces that are left over from cutting away the applique and glue them on stuff. Glue them on on shoes, glue them on leashes, uh, glue them on the back of a cap, anything so you're not wasting the fabric and it still gives you a little bit more visibility. Um, so keep in mind um, if it's government compliant that you're looking to go um, to cover for your um, clients themselves, the, this material is what's actually used on those apparels that's actually, um, that you would purchase and you can embroider on. Um, but you can also add this on to garments um, or use it as an applique like we showed you um, to get that true uh, reflective qualities that you're, you're looking for for safety. Um, so it's a silver looking or, um, yeah, it's silver looking during the day and it reflects a bright light um, just like a regular reflector would um, if a light is shined on it. And it's sold by the yard, so it's about 12 inches wide and you buy it by the yard. And, you know, the possibilities, of course, are endless when it comes to this particular product. Um, it's fun to play around with. The next applique material we'll show is stitch foil from Reflectro. This should be considered only for special effects. It has no certification to be used on safety apparel, but it is able to increase visibility for home use. This is really good. It, it's, there's a lot of varieties, uh, uh, colors and, and uh, styles of this uh, applique material. Real good to use for um, kids' garments where you want something, you know, like faux rhinestone look because you can't do rhinestones on uh, children's garments, but you can cut out a design that's going to look like the rhinestones, and there's enough variety of the colors that you can do, you know, not just looking like crystal rhinestones. Do some kind of a fashion shape, you know, anything, and especially since distressed designs seem to be still here after many, many years, the uh, scratch the different colors that have the scratch effect, just use that applique letters on using that and you get that distressed letter look without having to actually try to embroider distressed leather letters. On this one, the Texas I did, just, you know, took, the, this is the silver scratch and then I used for my uh, outline stitch, I used the silver uh, super twist just to give it a little bit more sparkle, but there's just so much you can do with this and it's just fun. It's a fun applique fabric to, material to work with. It really is. And Nancy's, yeah, Nancy's Superman thing is really great. <laughs> 
I think he's pretty cool too. Um, Superman's pretty cool in and of himself, but we wanted to hide the Superman logo on this particular shirt. So this is actually a day glow um, fluorescent shirt and went ahead and used the um, luminous or it's iridescent almost. You, you pretty much see right through this particular stitch foil. Um, so it's pretty much um, really subtle um, on the garment itself until you shine the light on it. So all three examples here you're going to see on the right side, you're going to see what it looks like under normal light, normal conditions where, you know, all those different colors that you have, whether it's just a nice subtle gold, um, you have the see-through one, and you have the scratched um, silver one that Jane used on the Texas State um, applique. They look neat in and of themselves, but when you apply that light to it, um, the most easiest, I should say the easiest way to, to see it is to take a picture with your with your phone and make sure the flash is on so it gives it that light reflection. And on the left hand side, you're seeing what it looks like under that light. So it's similar to the reflective material we talked about before, um, but this one is not government compliant. So this one really is for fun, um, but it just gives you so many different things to do anywhere from, you know, trying to hide something to making it stand out like that Texas um, that Jane did or just a really pretty design with the lizard on the left side. You can see um, the brightness that's shining. Um, very little of it was used, but it has a pretty good impact when it comes to um, uh, the material itself. Jane, you had mentioned something specific about what you chose for Texas. Remember? The, oh, yes, and I, I thought about this after I sent the, the shirt in, but because of the scratch design, it kind of looks a little bit like a road map. And if I were to do this again, I would take and embroider a star or a heart or something in the area where basically where Houston is. And that way, all of the, the design, it looks like roads leading into and out of Houston. It looks a lot like our highway system. It just kind of gives, especially in my neighborhood, but it just kind of gives it a cool effect without having to actually stitch all those, you know, squiggly little lines. It just, just reminds me of a road map. Yeah, and there's just so many different um, fabrics that we saw on the slide before. That scratch is one example. Another one are, um, they're more like circular, so they look like more like splotches. So there's there's fluorescent colors available, so you're getting that day glow and fluorescent um, glowing um, qualities as well. So this really and is. And this is so, it's so easy to work with because once you you stitch it down, you just tear off the excess and it's clean line. You're not having to get your little applique scissors out and try to cut the right fabric yeah. <laughs> and not cut your underneath fabric while you're trimming the excess away. That's right, Jay, and that can actually be a real challenge um, to do. And you, you don't, I mean, you just cut it slightly bigger than the design, lay it down. It actually has a little bit of a sticky quality to it once you take the release paper off. Um, so it holds itself down. You don't have to use a spray adhesive or anything like that. Um, and then you do actually apply heat to it once everything's all said and done, um, whether it's with your iron or heat press, and that permanently adheres it to the garment. Um, so the um, satin stitches and any stitches that you do do on top of it are going to hold it down temporarily, um, but then once you apply that heat, it becomes a permanent um, adhesion that lasts through many, many washes. Um, and that was just one of the questions that somebody asked. Um, so it does. Have, we do have washing instructions um, that we'll we'll send along with it if it's something that you're interested in trying out. Um, but it does hold up to normal wear and tear. Um, it is heat activated. Heat activated. Um, so when it comes to drying it, you just want to dry it on um, medium to low temperature um, with your dryer, and um, it'll hold up very well. Um, so we're going to wrap up this one, uh, this particular product, and you're going to achieve that increased visibility, um, especially at night with the lights on it, or you could do it for special effects if you're taking pictures with a camera. Um, make sure that you tell somebody to use their flash on their camera with their phone, and you know they'll be pretty impressed with the results. So between the, fab, um, the different designs and the textures, the fluorescent colors, you have a lot of... Um, ability to achieve increased visibility 
or attention to your embroidery or appliques that you have going on. There are some, um, you can actually have these custom customized um, to a specific Pantone color, or if you have a logo that you want to do, there's a, a small minimum of 200 sheets in order to do that, um, but that can actually be done as well. It's sold by sheet um, and very easy to use. Very easy to use. Okay, next. I just want to interrupt one I, second. A uh, question I, came in sure. about um, whether or not the webinar will be recorded. I just wanted to assure everyone that it is and that we'll be sending everyone a link that you can either watch the recording or um, download PDFs that you can print off. So um, before we went on to our next product, I just wanted to throw that out. That was a question that came in. Sorry, Jay. Keep going. Oh, that's a, that's okay. Yeah. Better that you tell them that. The next one I think is my almost my favorite thread, the, the Luna, the glow-in-the-dark thread. It's not a safety thread. It's a special effects thread. It looks white when it's sewn out and seen by day and it glows green at night. And it, it just stitches like a dream. I don't make any changes really even in tension when I put it on and I run my machine full out and I've never had a problem with it. It's a little thicker thread but it's still it just runs beautifully and there's so much you can do with it. Of course Halloween designs you know that's a given but back a few years ago I did some shirts for a client of mine that they were hosting an event uh, in a bar, in a low light situation, and they wanted, it was a networking thing, so they wanted their people to, people to be able to recognize their, their hostess. So I stitched their logo on shirts using the, the Luna, the glow in the dark, and it was absolutely a hit. Everybody, you could see who you needed to talk to if you wanted to talk to one of the, the client members. And then they kept up at the bar, they kept a flashlight, so if the glow started kind of fading on the shirt, they would just go up there and get the flashlight and recharge the thread for a couple of minutes and then they were back out in the crowd and it was just absolutely a hit for everybody. And this particular design, the cat face, I have done before for, I have a good friend who's very much into cat rescue and she's always going out after dark in the area, in the neighborhood trying to find the cats that people are saying need a home, need a home. So she, you know, to, to make it kind of fun but also a little bit safe for her, I stitched this cat face in the glow-in-the-dark thread on a shirt for her and that's what she's supposed to wear when she's out rescuing cats. Um, and on the other side, I got those owls over there by Urban Thread. Um, that was just a really cool design I found over there. And just throwing the um, the Luna in for the, the moon in the background and the black for the trees and the owls. Um, it's pretty cool. I it, it looks very nice. I mean, you could put, easily put this on a bag. Um, I, I can see making either one of these into a trick-or-treat bag. Um, so very oh, yeah. friendly. For this type of year, you can just add your um, keyboard lettering on the top of the bottom, whichever works out well for you. Um, but it's a 40 weight thread, it's a polyester thread, um, so the, the, the characteristics of it are very similar to a polyester embroidery thread, so washes well, um, stitches well, like Jane said. Um, these are simple 40 weight designs that we've um, gone ahead and put the Luna in and it runs really well. Um, you know, I run it, you run, as long as you have your tension set on pretty much any embroidery thread, it's going to run well. Um, so just like any embroidery thread, whether you use an Apollonian, a rayon, or the Luna, you just want to make sure it's tension. And once you get that tension run, um, or set, I should say, it's going to run really well. Um, specialty threads, um, very often, and even with regular threads, consider slowing your machine down on a regular basis. Um, when you have a 70,000 stitch design, your, ten your, your tendency, I think, is going to be to run it as fast as you can. Um, but think about it like a sports car. Just because it can run that fast doesn't mean you're going to run it that fast on a regular basis. So um, even with your standard threads consider slowing it down designs will actually stitch out better um, and cleaner um, if you slow the machine down so 
Um, somebody asked about the washing instructions as well. And of course, yep, it's a polyester thread, so it's going to have similar um, washing instructions to that as well. Another question that came in is regarding how long Luna will stay glowing after it's been exposed to light. Jane, in the situation that you ex um, described, was there any um, report back to you as to how long uh, the thread stayed glowing before it had to be recharged? A lot of it depends on, on how long it's been charged. But I would say, they didn't, my client that did the, the uh, event in the bar, they didn't tell me how long, but just on stuff that I've done for myself, at least a half hour to an hour, just depending on, you know, how bright the light is, where you're charging it, you know, letting it set out as long as possible, but long enough, and maybe even longer than that, you know, if you're going out trick-or-treating, then, you know, I think the kids would get around the neighborhood before the glow <laughs> faded away. on the away. size of the neighborhood, right? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it depends <laughs> on the size of the neighborhood and, and how many lights are on. Someone wrote in that they use this all the time and that for them they get 20 minutes of solid glow coming from it. So um, as Jane said, a lot is going to depend on the brightness that you expose it to and the length of time that you expose it to the light. So you kind of have some control over that yourself. And somebody asked about does it, uh, um, does it glow under a black light. This one actually doesn't, but we do have our fluorescent threads coming up that we're going to talk about. Um, so this one is activated and you're going to get that increased visibility um, by applying the light and having it glow that that um, common green that you see, whether it's a kid's toy um, and just the different things that have these qualities to it. Um, it's a very rare. I think, excuse me, I think one of the things that would be really fun to do with this is the um, the face mask that you see, the embroidery designs, Urban Threads has some, Embroidery Library has some. Wouldn't it be just really cool to do one of those lacy looking uh, Halloween masks and do it in the Luna thread and go out w with your, your face glowing? <laughs> yep, I think that would be really cool, especially for the parents walking around with the kids. Right? Exactly, so, yeah, yeah, let them have some fun. Or yes. maybe it's a masquerade par um, party going oh, yeah. on or something. But yeah, exactly. that's a great idea. Um, okay. so, uh, yeah, go ahead, sorry. No, no issues. Um, so here we have our temporary glow-in-the-dark thread. That's Luna. It glows in the dark. Um, great for children's wear and costumes. This is for novelty and fun only, um, not for safety. It's going to increase your visibility um, by glowing in the dark. I believe that Jane mentioned before about, you know, carrying a flashlight with you. So make sure you, you would, if you're sending your kids out trick-or-treating or, you know, you, of course you're going out with them, um, give them a flashlight. Make sure that they, they shine it on there every once in a while, and that's just going to recharge it. Um, the longer you hold it on, the longer it goes. I, I agree. I think you can probably get a good 20 minutes of, like, a deep glowing to it, um, but just make sure you have that flashlight. And it is a 40-weight thread. Um, so you get your density settings right there for you and um, wash as well. Okay, our next product we've included is Super Twist Thread. Because it, it the, oh, I love this thread. It, <laughs> the visibility is great because its appearance to shimmer and sparkle. It's a popular edition of Bling all year long, especially, you know, around the holidays, of course, but in Texas, Blaine is here year-round, so we lose, use a lot of metallic thread, and this thread runs beautifully. It really does, Jane. Um, it is a thicker thread, so I think, you know, between it being the thicker 30-weight thread, um, it's two, two types of metallic threads twisted together. Um, I think you get the best bang for your buck when it comes to this thread because you can actually utilize it like we saw on the screen before. The um, peacock feather, that was literally embroidered and digitized for 30 um, super twist threads, so it gives a real big impact with it. Um, the car before this had just a little bit here or there and um, still had that big impact. On these examples here, like you know, Jane was saying, Bling is big in Texas. Bling is big um, around as well 
when it comes to um, apparel and garments and things like that. And I think the first tendency is to think of this as a, a holiday, uh, end of the year holiday type um, designs, like you have the snow designs with the um, pine cones there that were digitized. Um, the white on top of the pine cones is actually a super twist and there's like a layer on top of the cones themselves, the pine cones, and it just gives it kind of an all over sparkle um, to that one. But over on the right hand side we've got some pretty summer flowers that we put super twist in the center as again as a, almost like a netting that went over that center part and gave it a lot of sparkle and shine um, for that as well. So think about super twist as like I said, I, it is one of my favorite threads, or I should say it is my favorite thread, because I think you do get the most bang for your buck. Um, I try to put it in um, as often as I can. Um, you do have to digitize it if you're going to be doing a lot of um, fill areas, and if you don't do your own digitizing, um, the design on the right is a stock design that was digitized for 40 weight rayon, um, but I chose where I wanted to put that metallic in there, the super twist, and uh, worked really well. Um, so again, you're going to achieve bling and sparkle with this particular thread, um, which does in fact give you that increased visibility, and that's what we're talking about with the special effect products here today. Um, so it's available, and you, as you can see, in over a hundred colors in those solids, but it's also got the multicolors. Um, that's, those are really cool colors, and then if you want to go a little more subtle with the Super Twist thread, you're still going to get that sparkle and shine with it, but there's some opal colors and there's some crystal colors available as well. It is a thicker thread, so you want to make sure the density is set at 6.0 if you're doing your own digitizing, and that is mostly just for your um, fill areas, but you're going to get that, um, that great effect from this particular thread. And so could you address the needle that you would use? For Absolutely. Um, yeah, needle charts are available from most of your thread manufacturers. We actually have one right on our website. It talks about all our threads and the particular needles. For this thread itself, it is a 30 weight thread and it's twisted so it's a little bigger. So we recommend that you go all the way up to a 90 um, slash 14 needle for this one. And you're going to find that it runs really well. Um, Slow the machine down, it's metallic. When it comes to metallic threads, slowing the machine down, making sure you have a bigger needle, um, making sure the design is uh, effective for it, um, you're going to get it to run well. But I, I would have to say probably the most important thing there is slowing the machine down when it's metallic because you've got to reduce the heating up of it, which is a normal aspect when you're embroidering at 1,100 stitches. Um, you want to slow it down so that it doesn't heat up and break. The person that sent in that question um, is trying to avoid shredding. Isn't that something that you would look at density or intention as well? Um, well, shredding can actually happen. I mean, that's really the breaking of the thread. You've got a couple of different threads twisted there, and it's going to start shredding once you heat it up. Um, so that 9014 needle, which is a large eye um, embroidery needle as well, you're going to have a hole big enough to support the thread. But consider if you're using a commercial machine and it runs 1,000 stitches a minute or uh, 1,100 stitches a minute, slow it down to about 650 or 700 when it comes to metallic thread. Um, use that large eye needle, 9014, slow the machine down, and you're going to see a, a huge um, difference. Um, one, of our, one of our guests wrote in that um, she stitched, she or he stitched crowns um, for homecoming sashes with Super Twist and how well it worked. Yep. Um, I have seen other crowns, designs for crowns um, where Super Twist is used and it, it looks really, really nice. Yeah. Yep. And it so, looks really great when you do like freestanding lace ornaments and Christmas designs. I mean, I, I've used the silver a lot doing freestanding lace Christmas ornaments. Yeah. It's hard to avoid at holiday time. It's it is. something that it, we turn to often as well. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see, you'll, you'll see an increased use of it for sure at that time, but bling and special effects that can be achieved with it. I mean, an example I've used in the past is I had a beautiful Arabian horse um, design that was stitched out, and I used one of those opals um, that had just some shading on the horse itself, and it just gave a super effect to the horse itself. Okay, Jane, our, our last product, if you could 
talk about this for us, please? Oh, okay, and once again, I'm saying this is my favorite thread. <laughs> I love this. I, I love the the fluorescence, especially. But the final product we'd like to mention in regards to increasing increasing visibility is a unique use of 100% polyester polyneon and a matte finished polyester thread called frosted matte, both in fluorescent colors. They're 100% polyester, and they glow under black light. Uh, the, I use the fluorescence a lot. I, I have a lot, my husband's a hunter, so he, he have a lot of hunting clients and shooting clients. And I use the fluorescence on their shirts, both for visibility and, and just because I like using it a lot. And uh, the, their sporting clay team, you know, we I use the fluorescent orange on for their putting their names on their shirts. Uh, you know, it just it's a wonderful thing. This rooster design, the Momo Denny design there, that's I put that on a black jacket. That's just because I saw those roosters and I said I need to do that in fluorescent uh, thread. It, it looks much better in person than, than the picture, but you can use it, you know, fashion statement. Uh, once again, because it glows under black light, if you've got a customer that is a bar, you know, and they have, and it's dark and they have black light in there, or a dance club, or uh, even a, a, a dance troupe that's going to be doing something special and they have black lights for their, you know, performance, this stuff is just wonderful. It just you know, it's fun. It really is, Jane. I love that. Um, I love when you put the fluorescent colors on black, especially, or a very dark color, because it really does make it pop in and of itself. Um, you know, hunting and um, safety aside, fluorescents are, you know, in the children's wear departments, um, they're on the safety vest and jackets that um, the safety crews are wearing. Um, but putting this simply on a dark fabric just makes it pop and it's going to make it show up. Um, we're going to see the frosted mats coming up soon, um, but that simple pumpkin design, again, on a dark bag, uh, made it look pretty cool under the black light. So you get invisibility with, in two ways with this. One is just during the day, it has that day glow appearance. Um, maybe you don't want to put it on a fluorescent garment. Putting it on black is just pretty super looking. Um, it just really makes it pop out. And it does, it looks good also on, um, you know, the, the, hunt, the green that hunters wear, that olive drab, it yeah. can really pop on that, and even on khaki for that matter, but, um, and it will show up on some, um, uh, it will show up fairly well on camo patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just for novelty type things, maybe you don't want to be out there um, in your camo doing your hunting, uh, people wear camo all the time. Um, so if it's for novelty or just casual wear, putting this on it really does definitely pops on those olive green khakis and stuff like that. Um, so the frosted matte ones here are, um, somebody asked the question, did you say it does frosted matte thread glow under the black lid as well? Uh, well, frosted matte is a polyester thread, so they were able to make these in fluorescent colors. Um, there's a fair amount of colors available. You can see the array of the rainbow colors in the upper right-hand corner. All of the pictures that we took are under are under a black light, so we wanted to show you the, the full effect of what it does do with that. So again, it's a polyester thread. The fluorescent colors are used here, and you can see the ones on the the parrot on the left side, you can see what colors are clearly fluorescent, which ones aren't on that particular design. I think one of the, my favorite things about the frosted matte when it comes to the fluorescence is you have a blue available. And the polyester threads generally, um, you don't get a blue fluorescent color, but you can see the eyeball and the, and the parrot, you can see the blue on the, the butterfly going on there. Um, and they're glowing underneath. Uh, that black light effect. Um, so you get twofold when it comes to fluorescence. You get the day glow and, and the fluorescent. Um, I've heard of um, parties you can have at bowling alleys where they get the black lights going. So you have fun out there bowling and 
um, under the black lights and you know if you have designs that are specifically stitched out with either the frost mat or the poly polyneon um, fluorescent colors you're going to have a great effect with those so increased vis visibility there for sure and if you have any customers that are either a, a school, I'm thinking elementary school or dance competition where some of these are light activated, obviously the polyesters are black light activated, the stitch foil um, by just shining a light directly on it. So you can suggest something unique to your customers by adding some of these to costumes that won't show until a light is shown on them, shined on them. So you've got the ability to give them something really unique um, that will bring some oohs and ahs from the crowd and the audience while they're watching these costumes come to life. Um, so here we have, last but not least, the, is the fluorescent colors. They provide that daytime glow um, with those fluorescent colors, plus the added ability to glow under the black light, which is, seems to be making a comeback um, after this, a long wait from the 70s. Um, you have your frosted matte that has that matte finished look to it, and it's available in the large cones. You get 13 colors available there. Um, it is a 40 weight thread, so you have your density there. You're going to use your standard needle, 7511, for the frosted mat and the poly neon. The added advantage of the poly neon polyester fluorescent colors is you're going to have it available in that standard 40 weight. Um, there's a thinner 60 weight thread that's great for your corporate logos. And then newly introduced is a, even a thinner thread, which is 75 weight thread. So, all three of those weights have at least some fluorescent color availability in them, and that's just your standard poly neon thread, polyester, available in cone spools, um, and your standard density of a 4.0. And again, that's a 75-11 needle. Um, One of the handouts that we have available to you today is a list of all of the colors that poly neon and frosted matte uh, come in that are black light sensitive. So that is something that um, you see on your screen as a handout, but also when we send out our follow-up emails, there'll be a link there to take you to that handout if that comes in handy for you. Okay. Um, we've covered the material in record time today, and so we're going to kind of wind down. There were not a lot of questions, I, and judging from the questions that did come in, it sounds like many of you are already using these products, which is great to see. Um, also some advice from some, some of you, which we'll include in the Q&A. Um, I noticed a question or two that was particularly technical when it comes to uniforms and government regulations, and I have to admit we would research that for you rather than guess at the answer, so um, that will be coming to you in a follow-up. Um, and a reminder, your embroidery customers may be looking to you um, to enhance uh, the visibility of a uniform or a costume or something, a special occasion like for Halloween that Nancy and Jane were talking about children's wear. Um, make certain first that you understand whether the increased visibility that you're being asked for is a safety precaution or a special effect. And then we encourage you to choose from these products which we have available to you and we encourage you to talk with us on the phone, chat online. We can certainly help you um, understand them and work with them if you aren't already. And finally, We'd like to thank you for your time spending it with us today and participating in the webinar. Um, we have a special to offer you. If you purchase any one of the items that we mentioned um, today, you would save 10% off your entire order. Uh, Jane, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. Uh, we learned a lot. We saw some of the designs that you do. Um, to Nancy Minnie for joining me here at headquarters. Also to Urban Threads, um, they shared some of their designs with us for illustration. We sure appreciate that. And just a reminder, uh, we will be emailing um, to everyone the answers for the questions that came in today. Um, we've collected them throughout the webinar and um, also the webinar itself available for you to review. Um, since it was recorded, also a printable version, and the handout um, that has the list of color numbers for polyneon and frosted net. 
Uh, so thank, thank you very much. Jane? And also remember, two weeks from now is Imprinted Sportswear Show in Fort Worth. Come visit. Madeira will be there, and you can see all of this stuff in their booth. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm trying to read some questions here to see if there's any that we can answer now. Um, but I think we'll probably just send them send the answers to you all. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. And we're going to skip October for a webinar, but we'll have another one prepared for you for November. Thank you so much. Goodbye.